Hi, and welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. In my last video, I talked about the classic Nikon F with standard prism finder. And one of the reasons for the great success of the Nikon F was the ever-expanding list of accessories that were available. So we're going to start with the Nikon prism finders for the F. And let's just get this photomic in here. Okay, this is the first meter prism for the Nikon F that was introduced in 1962. It's called the photomic. It has an external meter window. It is not a through-the-lens meter. Now, the Nikon F camera does not require a battery. There is no built-in meter to the camera. You, you got your metering through prism finders that were available. Okay, and this was the first one. Um, the way it worked was first you had to index the lens to the meter, okay, to the meter prism. Okay, what does that mean? Well, the meter needed to know what aperture was set on the lens. And the way that happened was, let's take this lens off, okay? You set your lens to f16. You then match the black dot on the lens to the black dot on the camera. And when you did that, the coupling prong on the lens mated with the coupling pin on the camera. Now you'll notice as I turn the aperture, that is moving. That is indicating to the meter what the aperture is. And it is also visible on a little window here on the back of the camera. I know it's a little hard to see. Okay, that indicates your aperture. Um, also, the meter coupled to the shutter speed dial. Um, and there's a pin on the shutter speed dial that couples to the meter prism, and you have your shutter speeds visible on the back here. Okay, um, you lose the T setting. The Nikon F had a T setting without a meter prism. When you go to the Photomic and several of the others, you lose that. But you do notice you still have the B setting. It says B2. Uh, that would indicate an exposure of two seconds. Now, the camera doesn't time two seconds in order to do that. You would use the B setting and just hold the shutter open for two seconds. Another thing you needed to do in order to get proper exposure was to set, of course, the ASA. In those days, we called it ASA. Now it's referred to as ISO. The numbers mean exactly the same thing. So what you would do, there are two little pins on the top of the meter prism, and you would set it, you would set your ISO opposite the maximum aperture of the lens. So this is a 1.4 lens, and this is 400. I know it's very small, so I'm setting it between 1.2 and 1.6. Okay, now one of the negatives of this finder is every time you change lenses, if you went to a different maximum aperture, for example, if I went from this 1.4 to a 2.8, I would have to change the ASA and set it opposite 2.8 for the 2.8 lens. So it did really slow things down. Uh, to turn the meter on, there's a button here. You see a needle in the top of the finder and a circle when that needle by turning either the shutter speed dial or the aperture centered. Uh, when the needle centered in that circle, you had proper exposure. Uh, there was also a duplicated one inside the viewfinder. It took one battery, one 1.35 mercury battery that went into the side. Those batteries are no longer available. Some companies do make um, substitutions for them. Um, most of these meters are dead. This one doesn't work. Most of these older meters uh, do not work. This one took had one CDS cell. Okay, uh, it also had a square, um, excuse me, a rectangular eyepiece like the standard prism on the Nikon F. And in order to use some eyepiece accessories such as a rubber eye cup, you needed a, an adapter that slid into this and then took the circular uh, accessories. Okay, so that was 1962. In 1965, Nikon came out, and I don't have one, but I do have the instruction manual. Nikon came out with the Photomic T. 
And the photonic T basically looked just like this, except, of course, it didn't have this window because it was a through the lens meter. It was Nikon's first through the lens meter in 1965, and uh, it used two CDSLs that measured the entire focusing screen. Um, it operated the same way as this, had the little window back there with the aperture. You needed to mount your lens with the aperture set to f16. Um, it also uh, had this window up here for um, setting the exposure as well as on the inside. It turned on the same way. It took two mercury batteries that went into the side. And then finally in 1967, Nikon finally went to a center weighted meter. Uh, the center weighted meter, um, let me show you how it, what it measured. The center weighted meter, and we're going to take the focusing screen out. I showed all this in my previous video. Hopefully you can see this. I think it might be easier if we take a look at the back end. Okay, you will see, let's see if I get that a little sharper. Okay, you will see a 12 millimeter um, circle. The very center is the split image rangefinder, but in the surrounding circle is 12 millimeters. The meter on the TN concentrated 60% of its sensitivity into that circle. Okay, it metered the rest of the screen, but most of its sensitivity, a good portion of its sensitivity, was in that um, center area. Okay, so the TN was basically the same operation as the T. Uh, still needed to set the uh, ISO opposite the maximum aperture, and you needed to set the lens to f16 in order to mount it. Finally, in 1968, right, let me get this centered up here. In 1968, Nikon introduced the final meter prism for the Nikon F, the Photomic. FTN. FTN had a center weighted meter like the TN. However, Nikon now went to a semi automatic indexing system in order to let the meter know what the aperture of the lens was. No longer did you have to set the ISO or ASA as it was called then on the finder opposite the maximum aperture. So, the way this worked, let's take this lens off. Okay, and what you would do is you would set the lens to 5.6, okay? Also, you would want to make sure that the coupling pin on the meter, which is right there, is centered on the finder, okay? When it's centered, it's approximately at the 2.8 mark right here. Okay, so you take the lens at 5.6, mount the black dots, and then you twist the lens to its minimum, in this case F16, to its maximum, and then you will see here on the finder, you see it says 1.2, and you see that red indicator is just to the left of 1.2, that indicates a 1.4 lens. If this was a 2.8 lens, then that red indicator would be here opposite 2.8. Okay, so that's a semi-automatic uh, indexing system. Uh, also, the FTN had some other improvements. Um, you uh, had a circular eyepiece, so accessories just screwed right in. A rubber eye cup, an eyepiece magnifier, a right angle finder. Uh, also, you had shutter speed available in the viewfinder. And you also got back your T setting, okay? With the uh, Photomic, Photomic T and TN, you did not have a T setting. Now you still had your time um, setting. Uh, also, if you needed to turn the shutter speed dial to T to get a correct reading. That indicated an exposure of four seconds. B would indicate a, an exposure of two seconds. And of course, you would need to use um, either the B or the T setting um, to uh, obtain that longer exposure since the camera only timed down to one second. Okay, they did one more thing with 
the Photomic FTN finder. Um, some people complained that the older finders were a little wobbly, so Nikon added a clamp at the front. So I'm going to mount, uh, remove this finder by pressing in on the button, as you did with the others, but then there's a little lever here which releases the clamp. And sometimes it's a little hard to get. There we go. Okay, and also you will notice that the, this meter took two um, mercury batteries. They went into the bottom. Okay, now I have put, this meter works, and I um, purchased an adapter that allows me to use um, silver batteries in this meter, and it works fine. Uh, I think I had to adjust the ISO a little bit, but um, it works great and because uh, you can no longer get the mercury batteries. Okay, now wine does make, the wine cells will work, but they, they're expensive and they don't last very long. So I recommend um, the adapter to use the silver battery, and I will put that in the description below. Okay, so this was the final meter finder for the F. Uh, it came out in 68 and uh, was continued through the entire production run of the F um, into 1973. Um, late in the production run, um, Nikon added a plastic tip to the uh, advanced lever. They added a plastic um, F2 style self timer. They uh, also uh, changed the PC socket here to a threaded one so you could screw in a, a PC cord and not have to worry about it falling out. Um, and I think that was about it for the late model Nikon F. Okay, so now let's look at some other accessories real quick. Um, we have the AR1 soft shutter release. Beautifully made. These sell for quite a bit now. I've, I've seen them on eBay for $30. But it screws in to the shutter release and just gives you, let's make sure we have a faster speed, just gives you a just a little softer release. A little, it puts it up a little higher um, and is a little more comfortable than the original shutter release. There are also third-party ones that are not nearly as well made, but they work. Uh, Nikon offered, like I said, a ton of accessories for the F. There were motor drives, several different motor drives at 250 exposure back, um, a right angle finder, which screwed into the eyepiece, the circular eyepieces, and just screwed in back here, and it gave you a, uh, you know, enabled you to uh, hold the camera a little lower if you had the camera on the ground. Uh, you did need to put your eye right up to it. Um, they also had some other finders. There was a waist level finder. They also had something called a prism reflex sport finder. This is actually one for the F2, but it looks almost identical. It will work on the F. You just have to remove the name plate on the front of the camera. If you remove that nameplate, this will fit the F. Um, it enabled you to um, view uh, the entire screen from a couple inches away, uh, which uh, works great if you have goggles on, a helmet. Um, again, no meter. Uh, and then late in the production run, they came out with a high magnification finder, um, good for macro work. Uh, it um, also has a diopter to correct for your vision. Just turning this. Uh, again, this is one for the F2, but would work on the F. Uh, they also had a panorama head, which the camera attached to. And if you wanted to do panorama photos, you just, it just had click stops. And as you turned it, it moved the camera. Okay, there were a lot of accessories available for the Nikon F. And, uh, that helped its popularity because it was adaptable to so many different photographic situations. In my next video, I'll be talking about the Nikomat FTN. The Nikomat FTN came out in 1967 and it had a couple features that made it a little more convenient to use than the Nikon F. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll be publishing a new video every Wednesday morning. So thanks for watching.